Well, hey there, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this reflection for Friday of the sixth week of Easter. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you, so you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you the gospel of the Lord. All right, sisters and brothers, I have to start with a little personal disclosure. I have never given birth. <laughs> it's true. I'm not a mom. Uh, our Lord, uh, uh, he's the son of God, so maybe he knows what it was like. Uh, he says, you know, that a, a mother who has given birth. Once she sees the baby, she's going to forget forever the pain <laughs> that the birth caused. I know a few moms who would probably disagree with our Lord on that. Um, you know, one, one, one woman said, giving birth is like eating 100 jalapeno peppers and then pooping a watermelon. <laughs> Maybe you moms uh, out there can verify whether that's true or not. We will never know. Uh, in any case, we're, we're in John's gospel in what is called the farewell discourse. Jesus is preparing for his death and resurrection, and he's saying goodbye to his apostles and preparing them for what's to come. It's a long farewell, four chapters of John to be exact. Uh, and Jesus is really saying, look, guys, uh, what's about to come is going to be very tough and very painful. And there's going to be a lot of confusion and a lot of sorrow and a lot of tears. But take heart, because on the other side of that pain is the resurrection, is joy. It's one of those mysterious laws of human life that in order to uh, find new life, to find joy, we have to go through some pain. Jesus gives the example in today's gospel of a woman giving birth, you know, and you look at uh, a mom's face when she's given birth and it looks like she's about to die, you know, the worst pain imaginable, I think, you know. Uh, and then you look at her face after she's given birth, looking at her newborn child, and it's the biggest smile that you have ever seen um, from death. To life. Here's another example, kind of a dumb one. I grew up in South Mississippi, a place that has weather kind of like Belize, you know, not a lot of snow down in South Mississippi. But I went to university in Boston, and one spring break, some of my uh, friends were going to go skiing. And they said, you want to come along? Well, I didn't know how to ski. I'd barely seen snow in my life, but I didn't want to be sitting in my dorm room all week. So I said, sure, let me go. Well, the first day of me trying to ski, let's just say it was not pretty. I got home at the end of the day and my arms and my legs were all bruised up. I could barely move the next day. But I kept at it and by the end of the week I had survived all that pain. And I'm not saying I was a great skier, but I could kind of like float down the hills with a little bit of grace. That's kind of a stupid example when you think about some of the pain that people have to go through in life. Love, people have lost loved ones in COVID recently, for example. But you get the idea, you know. Um, we got to go through some suffering in, to, in order to get to rebirth, to something more beautiful, to something new. One of my favorite, and why? <laughs> why is there suffering in the world? Well, that's the million dollar question. And, and frankly, theologians have been struggling with that question for a very long time. And I don't find any of the answers too satisfactory. But maybe that's the wrong question. I'm never going to get to an answer to that question this side of heaven. Maybe a better question to ask is, how do we suffer? How do we suffer? And you know, when, when bad things come into our life, that's kind of up to us how we respond. Uh, we can either get very angry, very mad at people, blame people, or we can learn to suffer in hope. One of my favorite uh, comedians out there is a guy named Stephen Colbert. He has a big show on late night television in the, in the United States. Maybe you've heard of him before. And he's also a very devout Catholic, a, a person of deep faith. And Stephen Colbert um, 
when he was a boy, I think about 10 years old, he had real tragedy strike him. He lost his dad and he lost his two, bro two of his brothers in a plane accident. Well, he was interviewed about that last year on CNN and I thought he had something really profound to say. I wanna share it with you. Stephen Colbert says, yes, it's a gift to exist and with existence comes suffering. There's no escaping that. If you are grateful for your life, then you have to be grateful for all of it. You can't pick and choose what you're grateful for. What do you get from loss? You get awareness of other people's loss, which allows you to connect with that other person, which allows you to love more deeply and understand what it's like to be a human being if it's true that all human beings suffer. I don't think I can put it any better than that, sisters and brothers. We got two choices when we encounter those dark moments and roadblocks in our life, we can either let it turn us inward and become very bitter and nasty people, or we can suffer in hope. And what does that mean? Well, as Colbert suggests, uh, it means allowing our sufferings to, to, to be a source of grace for other people. It means allowing our sufferings to make our hearts bigger instead of smaller. It means allowing our sufferings to help us love others better. And it means, in some sense, as Stephen Colbert suggests, being grateful for our sufferings, uh, being grateful for all of life, which is a gift, not just the good times, but the good times and the bad, because God is present in all of them. Even in the suffering, there is grace to be found, an opportunity, to, an opportunity for us to be grateful.